Hi, everybody, and welcome to Top Women in Grocery. I'm Lynn Petrax, Senior Editor at Progressive Grocer, and our podcast is focused on the trends, topics, and interests that move women forward in the grocery industry. We spotlight extraordinary women in the industry who have had successful careers and interesting lives, who will also make a positive impact on their workplaces and communities. So today, I am so pleased to be talking with Jalea Hemmings, founder and CEO of Nourish and Bloom Market in Fayetteville, Georgia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. And we loved hearing your uh, presentation with Jamie at our recent grocery tech event. And so that's where we kind of got this idea to talk to you and learn a little bit more about, about what you're doing. So a little bit of background on you. Um, you are a visionary entrepreneur and a futurist uh, driven by your, uh, your passion for tackling the issue of food deserts. Jalea's pioneering approach to utilizing autonomous grocery technology to tackle food insecurity has made her a trailblazer in the retail and retail technology industries. She has a deep understanding of the challenges faced by communities lacking access to healthy food options, and she's established herself as a leader in the quest to make a positive impact in the world. Uh, Jalea's work in business development extends beyond the current generation to the next, and we're going to hear a little bit more about that later, with her program, I Am Kid Boss. The program reaches out to inner city kids and offers them the same personal mentorship and tools to start their own successful companies that she gives to her clients. Through Nourish and Bloom Foundation, um, she focuses on teaching the next generation about STEM and providing training and development in careers in retail technology and the retail industry. Jalea is an advocate for diversity and inclusion in the workplace and an influential speaker promoting the important role of women in technology. She believes there should be no boundaries, neither class nor gender, that should stand in the way of being able to use one's purpose, passion, strengths, and talents to fuel entrepreneurial endeavors. And she was named one of the 25 most influential and prominent Black women in business and is an SXSW Release It finalist. So welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm so excited. As I mentioned, um, you know, Grocery Tech was a really exciting time. Mm -hmm. I was glad to meet you there and excited about where the industry is going. It sure is going in some great directions and much needed and much overdue directions as well. So we are glad to hear that. So let's talk a little bit about, I love the backstory of how you started Nourish and Bloom and what need did you want to address and how did you and Jamie decide to do it yourself um, as entrepreneurs? Tell us how you how you got started. Sure. And sorry, it's always sounds oh, no. challenging. You love it. That's <laughs> I love, I love, I love. Yeah. Welcome to the crazy. Today yeah, we no have kidding. to be in the store, so that's I great. apologize. No, no, <laughs> that's, why, that's why we like it. So it's great. I know. Um, But I got interested in the grocery space um, when my son was diagnosed with autism when he was two. Mm -hmm. And um, in that, we learned the importance of diet and we were looking for healthy options, weren't able to find what we were looking for. And at that point said, well, it's our son. Diet is an important piece. And so we started making healthy meals for him. So that's how I got Mm -hmm. into the grocery space Mm -hmm. um, on the brand side and uh, realized quickly on that, you know, that there was a huge opportunity here to be able to find an avenue that was, you know, just not addressed currently in the market when it came to making meatless meals for kids. Mm -hmm. And so, but started to see just, you know, in general, it wasn't just about children with autism. It was about all children and needing access to better food options and fast tracking now to being a grocery store (laughs) operator. Yeah. um, That mission doesn't really change. You know, it's really about how do we make, food accessibility easy, right? I mean, that's how I got into it because mm-hmm. it wasn't easy. And, yeah. you know, I tried to create a solution to make it easier. Mm-hmm. But moving forward, especially post-pandemic, it's all about how do we take away the friction um, in getting our needs met. Yeah, well, and, and speaking of the pandemic, was that a good time? to? It really accelerated so many things. So kind of how did that fit into where you and where and when you founded it and maybe move things along for, for you? Yeah, I, you know, for me is how it sparked our interest in getting into the space, right? Yeah. We saw all the challenges that we personally went through, um, which is getting access to food, right? And waiting in long lines and all the things that we all went through and shortages on staff and hours and the list goes on. Um, And once again, found ourselves in a situation where we felt this could be done better. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at how do we release the friction and knew that AI was a way to do that. And so for me, the pandemic sparked you know, outside of how horrific it was for us as a, as a world. Um, But it did spark for me just food accessibility and how do we increase food accessibility, whether there's a pandemic or not. Right. And so that's where um, the idea came from was just going through it personally 
and realizing there was a better way. And it's such a big leap to thinking about. We all have concepts and ideas, but you you made the leap. You did it. So did you ever have moments that you were like, what have we gotten ourselves into? And look what we did. <laughs> you know. So tell me a little bit I about mean, how all we- the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real talk, right? I right? mean, absolutely. Yeah. All the time. I mean, you know, I wasn't a grocery store operator. I had a grocery brand, right? So yeah. there was a huge learning curve there, right? I understood from a technology piece what that was require, but um you know, there's a lot of moving parts that go into running a grocery store um, and successfully. And so, you know, there there are many days when we we're going through our learning curves and we're like, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> but, you know, I try to take every key learning as just an opportunity to, you know, figure out how do we make it better and how do we, you know, get better. But yeah, I mean, absolutely, especially with technology, especially with just the world we live in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's but it's been a fun journey. I always say entrepreneurship is one of those things where it's the highest highs and yeah. you know, you do have some lows. I don't want to say that there's not some yeah. lows in it, right? They sometimes say that you have to be kind of crazy to do this. Um, however, you know, I find that I always say that, you know, I always say dare to fail up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we always push ourselves yeah. to test the limits, right? Because, you know, for us, if you fail, a failure is just stopping, but you know, a mistake you learn from. So oh. Can I frame that, Julia? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I like but that. And what a passion. Overall. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, you have, what greater passions are there than parenthood and, and food, right? And nourishment. So um, I think that True. probably played into the, the name of the, of the operation in the store as well. I come up with the name. Yeah, the name really speaks to what we, you know, if you're not properly nourished, then there's no way for you to thrive, right? Mm-hmm. And that's essentially the name of our store, Nourish and Bloom. So mm-hmm. Um, you know, to me, it's the, it's the matter of the foundation. Nothing matters if you can't, you know, sustain yourself, right? Everything goes down the drain after that. So it's a really important necessity that I feel hopefully we're helping to bring better access to. I believe so. And, and yours is the first African-American owned autonomous grocery store in the world. So that's, that's, that's huge. And since you opened, how have you inspired others? I mean, you're the first, you're leading the way, but how, uh, how have you inspired others? Tell me about some, some of the ways that you're hearing back. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think of this as an ecosystem, right? It's like we're one piece within the ecosystem. And the only way for this ecosystem to thrive is to bring others along and help them to also share, you know, what innovations they have as well. And so every single time we go into a community, it's about how do we find the local products that are in this community, right? Mm -hmm. So that we can give them a platform and a place to be able to share their products with the community as well. And so that's a big piece for us. Education is another huge area for us. It's about why is it important to eat better? You know, I think we learned through the pandemic that there's, you know, different foods provide different results, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're, when you're trying to make sure that you're living in the best health. And so, you know, giving that level of understanding so that communities understand why I should pick maybe the apple over something else, right? And Mm -hmm. then in addition to that, with the technology piece that's bringing a whole nother level yeah. and layer mm-hmm. in that, you know, we really feel it's our duty to educate communities on technology because unfortunately or fortunately, however, wherever you fit in the aisle, yeah. um, it's not going away. Mm-hmm. AI is actually going to become more and more um, at the forefront of our lives. I mean, chat GPT is just the surface of what's coming, you know? And yeah. so with that, you know, we want to make sure that our, customers feel prepared and empowered to not see technology as a barrier, but Mm -hmm. to feel comfortable in operating. And so for us, we're teaching communities where we're putting stores about AI, about Mm -hmm. robotics, so that they feel comfortable and they don't feel like this is not for me or that they're not a participant within the space. And just in that alone, that's creating new skill sets where they might now have jobs that they weren't even thinking about in the, you know, before wow. and the increased earning power for them mm-hmm. and their families. So it's, I mean, really this store is touching on so many different areas from nutrition to career to just overall community belonging. So we're really excited about that. And access in that way, boy, access means a lot of different things in that way, doesn't it? Access Absolutely. to technology, Absolutely. access to food. So, um, you know, being able to, being able to deliver that. For sure. And how's that kind of working with people, people that maybe I'm sure you see people who come in for the first time and maybe they're just like, you know, maybe not sure. How does that, you know, how does that. Yeah, they walk in and they say, Whoo, there's a lot of cameras in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's their first statement. But, yeah. you know, it, that's part of the excitement of it all, right, mm-hmm. is taking someone who might be risk adverse initially and mm-hmm. start to talk, walk them through what 
the technology does and what the camera's purposes are. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh my goodness, this is kind of cool, right? Across all ages, right? It's not even age specific. They just want to understand and feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And you know, we are doing that hand over hand. We understood that you know we were going to be leading the way with this technology and that it was going to require, um, even though we have the highest in tech, that we still had someone in store to help navigate and help them navigate at least the first or second time until mm-hmm. they feel comfortable doing it on their own. But once they get it, they love it. And it's oh, just sorry. like, you know, it, it, they, they then start to brag, my grocery store is cooler than yours. <laughs> That's right. And I can go at two in the morning or one in the morning. I mean, exactly. You know, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I love there was some, some story that, you know, people can go when it works for them. Right. And they're fancy. Anytime. I mean, that was a, another piece. Like, yeah. you know, I, I wish I could say I was that organized mom that had everything all laid out, but I am the one that's like, oh my goodness, you have nothing in the fridge for lunch today. And it's like 630, right? In the morning, I'm like, uh, you know, what am I going to do? So, you know, if it's my... (laughs) my crazy life. For yeah, sure. I like that. I like that because we've all been there, you know, where the dog ate yeah. the loaf of bread and there goes that. So now I need to get something and I need a plate. Right. Yeah, there's no dog food. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why did no one say this earlier today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so true. And, and technology, is, is it in your background too? And how has grocery tech filled the gaps in providing consumers with what they need? And is this the right moment to bring everything to life? And you had the right skills and you both had the right skills to bring this to life? Yeah, so technology has always been a part of my life, um, mm-hmm. even from when I was little. So my father has always just been into technology, even though he's a lawyer by trade. Mm-hmm. So I've always had been tinkering and fooling around before I even knew what I was doing. Um, but, you know, technology for me has always been a way of making things easier, right, mm-hmm. and, and improving efficiencies. And so my background has been in that. And so anything that we've developed prior to the grocery space has been around improving efficiency. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I really see it as a key necessity for where we are, right? It's not, it's not about it taking some, a job away. It's about how do we make your job more efficient, right? So that you're happier about the role that you're in and you feel like now you have an assistant. And I think, you know, for what it's worth, chat GPT has really shown people, Mm -hmm. you know, what having that level of, efficiency can bring right mm-hmm. in like helping you with it's just like you know a grocery list or I need I have five things in my fridge how do I make a meal right mm-hmm. and like in seconds it's like moving faster than we ever could but it's not taking you away but it is like you know a great added assistant so in that sense I think you know technology is going to really prove to allow us to be able to deliver better faster provide more variety mm-hmm. meet a lot more personalization, which I think really came out of the pandemic right. is the need for that personalized experience that we're all used to seeing on the internet, right? When you go online, it's already providing you suggestions the moment you click on the web, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and they most of the time are like, yeah, I do need that, right? Yeah. You know, like they're, 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 thinking, yeah. they're, thinking yeah. more, they're thinking better for us than we are even thinking for ourselves at some point. Yeah. But that same level of personalization, how do we bring that into you know, brick and mortar. And that's something that you, I think you're going to see a lot more of. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've been really excited about how we are showcasing that um, within our store model too. And you have such a, the, the sense that this is so unique and that what you're doing, you're paving your own way. You're not, you're not following make necessarily other things that other people are doing. And how exciting is that? You get to do your own thing and pave your own way with your technology and your, and your reason for being in the, in the, in the, the vendors that you're working with. Right. Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean, it's just really exciting to be able to bring better food options to communities, right? Mm -hmm. I just feel like everyone, it's like our basic necessity. And so every day, it stopped being about me a long time ago. Yeah, It's really about how do we serve more and get better food to more, right? And as fast as possible, because proper nutrition is so important. So yeah, we're really excited about being able to, you know, put our focus there. And I'm sure you've heard back from people in the community, right? What have you heard from other parents and other people that you know, in terms of like what you're able to to give them? Is it? It's, I'm sure you've talked to a bunch of your customers in that sense, but yeah, the, the quality I mean, of the food. Absolutely. Yeah, I would say that quality wise, they're happy with the quality, right? That they're happy that they don't have to travel as far. Like yeah. They're all, you know, carbon footprint is such a big button right now for so many, and they love the idea that now. They have better options without having to drive 45 minutes or Mm -hmm. 30 minutes, right? And it has to be a whole outing experience. They like, from a family perspective, they like bringing their kids in and 
once again using it as a learning experience to say, hey, technology is where you need to yeah. start thinking about as far as a career path. Um, so that has also been great as well. But I think mostly they like the convenience. And they, I mean, mm. I think that's been the biggest feedback is that they just love the idea that they can come when they need it because nothing is open 24 hours. Anymore. That's right. And I think people are getting a little bit, I remember when ChatGPT first came out, even, I mean, it's so weird. It's even in the beginning of this year where a lot of people started hearing about it and the buzz that's like, they were afraid of it or this thing's reading my mind. Um, are you finding there's just like a little bit of an evolution in terms of acceptance and understanding of what it is versus the initial you know, wariness or what is this? Is Are you finding that? Yeah, absolutely. I think it comes with just not having that background knowledge, right? Yeah. And I mean, and how would you until you're yeah. in that experience, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, you don't know till you know. And so, you know, I I love that experience specifically is when you take someone who's like, I don't want any parts of this. Like, mm -hmm. I just want to get what I need to get and get out. Um, and then you have a moment to kind of talk to them and say what this represents or what this allows you to do. And, you, you know, they start looking at it a little differently. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't realize that. You know, yeah. or I'll help people come in. I'm in a rush. I just need to grab something really quick. I'm like, this is your way to grab something yeah. really quick. Right? Like, you know, and yeah. so taking away that friction. And But it comes with education. I mean, even when we started our food business years ago, I mean, beyond and impossible, everybody knows what it is now. They mm -hmm. didn't know anything about meat substitutes That's back right. then, right? You right. know, it wasn't sexy as it is now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there was a tremendous amount of education. And so now I see the value in that even more so now today than before of like having that training of having to take someone on a journey mm -hmm. um, and exposing them to a better way of doing things than they might have initially thought right and this is just another way of taking you on a journey right yeah. because nobody likes waiting in line mm -hmm. nobody likes fumbling for their payment nobody likes the self-checkout <laughs> process i mean you know we every time we do we do it because we got somewhere to go right and right it's more efficient but we all grumble as we do it right mm -hmm. and so yes. now yes. we're able to say we're taking away all of that you know we're getting you back to what you want to do we would spend time with your families enjoy mm -hmm. the day outside whatever it may be and you know do it in the most efficient manner and also be able to make it personalized to you, right? And make suggestions so that maybe, you know, as I send my husband to the store and he always forgets something, like it knows, well, the last time they got milk and he's about to walk out the store again without milk. So let's sure you you want give him a reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. his wife won't be like, oh, you forgot the milk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. like, you know, that's where we're going. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it, we're all starting to see the benefits. I mean, I don't want to say that there's no risk involved in AI. Obviously we know there is. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of benefits too. And being mindful. And are you bringing some of your suppliers along with you on this journey too? I love that you're working with and identifying and finding partners to sell their products. That's one of my favorite things about this industry. So are you bringing them along on the, on the journey of tech and food too? Yeah, absolutely. Like as far as them getting involved in how they, you know, get their products to us, what our requirements are for their products to be sold. Mm -hmm. Um, for sure. I mean, we've even, you know, UNFI, I have to shout out to them because, they have been really supportive of this technology, even mm -hmm. though this was even a new space for them, right? And right. they have just, you know, been on the journey, like, how do we make this better? How do we make it efficient? Because it's even different from a distributor to a, a retailer of how, sure. what products they suggest, right? Because their requirements for shelf weights, and we can go and geek out on that. But like, you know, there's just so much that involves, and, you know, they also highlight and carry a lot of local brands too. Yeah. So for me, you know, I think every community that we go into, local will always be our first model. So mm -hmm. we always source local first. And then when we can't find a local solution, that's the, when we go national for a national supplier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, that's just helping the ecosystem as I, we stopped, talked about initially to grow and thrive. And they've got some great stories too. So the technology Absolutely. can help you share their stories that consumers want to know and they want to tell. So, um, I mean, that's, that's such a rich thing too, that they're, they're able to tap. Right. Into. It just changes the whole environment. It's like an experience. And it that's is. what it has to be to get someone to come off of their couch to walk <laughs> to a brick and mortar today. Yeah. It has to be an experience. It does. And one with, you know, reducing the friction to be able to Absolutely. enjoy that. And one of the other stories that I like that you talked about um, in terms of a device for those who want to get into the business, I think you've already encouraged someone. I think I remember a story of someone young going, I think I want to do this. I think I want to be a grocer. I want to be in this, in this industry. So what advice do you have? And have you, have you found yourself, you know, working with young people as you do? Yeah, I'm really passionate about youth and starting now, right? Like I always say, this is the best time to follow whatever desire or dream you have 
when you're under your parents' roof and you don't have any responsibility outside of just going to school, yeah. right? Like outside of that, like you could do anything, right? Like, you know, what your parents wish they could do, you could do right now right. <laughs> with no inhibition. Um, but aside from that, I think like, you know, I always say the hardest part is to start. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, you know, a lot of times you do a lot of ideation and, and you ideate forever, right? And then by the time you're done ideating, somebody already did it, right? And you just need to take that first step. Yeah. So I always say, you know, make a plan and just to get started. It's like once you get started, instinctively, you'll know where you, you know, okay, well, now I got to create a name. Okay, well, what's next? You know what I mean? Like it's just all those different things that you'll start to kind of go down a path, but at least you're on your way. Mm-hmm. Um, the other piece is like, you know, we talked about it earlier. It's true. I'm like, I'm. What makes you different? How can you dare to fail up? Like, how can you push the limits of what you or what's actually on the market? Like, what can mm-hmm. you bring that's not here? That's going to be disruptive. Mm-hmm. Is always a big piece. Um, study your competition because yes. you know, learn why. Maybe if you see an opportunity, or maybe what, figure out not so much. Oh, like this is great, but like why? Maybe they explored it and they decided this wasn't the right way to go. Like you know, find all the different reasons about why you should be going in one direction and there's no better way than to study your competition. But, and the other piece is to find someone who's a mentor to you. Like that's a big piece. Yes. You know, I have so many mentors who have been where I wanted to go mm-hmm. and, you know, we're able to say, don't do that, do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or why do you think that? Or let's mm-hmm. think about that. And, you know, or just, you know, run an idea past. And I think it's all, you know, while family is great and sometimes, you know, your family is the place to go. Sometimes you need to go to someone, especially in this entrepreneurial world, that understands yeah. what it's like because it's a very different place than being an employee, for sure. And so, you know, it's good to have mentors that are in the space that you're going into. And I think they give it to you straight, right? Because, I mean, family, oh, family brings its own thing. But so if you can find a mentor that'll, that'll give it to you straight. But I like what you said, like, you know, why do you think that? Maybe challenging and asking questions like that and be, being able to listen. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not to say there's not. And just do it. Have fun. I mean, it's yeah. like if you have the opportunity to create something that is a vision that was given to you and bring it to life, there's no better joy than that. You know, I mean, it's, there's going to be a lot of work and there's a lot of ups and downs, but I think that there's nothing more rewarding than that. Absolutely. And there, there's going to be things that happen. Maybe it's the location or maybe it's, you know, whatever, whatever, or the, maybe zoning or whatever. You're going to have disruptions, but there's going to be some things. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We don't have all the time to tell you about all the things you say. <laughs> and the there will be things you go through. Things. That's right. And then they don't stop. There's just new things. Exactly. But, you know, the only way to fail is to give up, right? Like, exactly. you know, making a mistake is not a failure. I like so, that. I, mean, I always say, here. like, you know, have grace. Give yourself some grace. Mm-hmm. And what's next for you guys? Are you, I'm sure people ask you all the time, is there another location? Are you going to, what other things are you doing? I'm sure you work with new suppliers, but what, what's next for you? Yeah, I mean, our mission is simple. I mean, we're, you know, hot on track with that. And that is just to continue to increase access to better food options. We are really focused on food deserts um, because to me, that's an area that a lot of times is left behind. Mm -hmm. That's why they're a food desert. But those folks still need to eat well, right? My husband was raised in a food desert. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows exactly what that feels like. I mean, I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, we talked about performance. And so if you don't have proper nutrition, you can't perform in whatever your desires are. And so for us, we're looking at how do we quickly get into food deserts and start to eradicate a food desert in just as little as three short months with our containers. Wow. So we're going to be putting container stores in food deserts. And that's um, what we're working on towards the end of this year. So we're really excited about that because our goal is to eradicate two food deserts before the end of this year. Um, which is going to do great things for the community. We're excited about sharing technology with the mm-hmm. community, you know, bringing phenomenal experts on nutrition in to just really, you know, sh- talk about why these decisions make sense as far as making better food choices. And so we're, you know, and then continuing that track moving from city to city is really our plan. So we're just excited about it. That's great. And that's moving along fast. And, you know, it's always amazing the number of food deserts and the locations because they're, they're everywhere. They're in, Every city, every city, rural areas. I think sometimes it's it's surprising, um, and, and the solution isn't necessarily bringing in, bringing in something that doesn't isn't as focused on nutrition, right? But there's just so many food deserts. So many, it's so many, and and it doesn't have to be. I think that's yeah. the key. You know, like I think that's what we've learned is that you know with the amount of food that's given, there should not be anyone that goes hungry. But it's about once once again those efficiencies and you know 
all of that. And I think technology is really going to break down, has already and will continue mm -hmm. to help break down a lot of these barriers so that this is not something we're talking about 10 years from now. Right. And you can scale. That. That's my goal. Yeah. We won't be talking about, we'll remember when food yeah. deserts existed? You know, like I want to get there. I want to be there. Be something. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. And you guys can move fast. That's that's one of the beauties of your models. So you can scale fast. You've got the you know the concept with the container and then technology behind it. So you can you can do these these goals of two by the end of the year, which absolutely. is absolutely yeah. It just takes three months. That, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And if people want to learn more, Jalea, or reach out to you, um, you know, what's a, what's a good contact for you? If you don't mind? Yeah, I mean, definitely follow us on LinkedIn. So Nourish and Bloom Market on all social media channels. We're getting into social. Um, so TikTok, Instagram, all of those. Um, and then our website, Nourish and Bloom Market as well, just to see where our new locations are and um, continue to follow the journey and hear the amazing stories from the communities that we're going to serve. I love it. I love it. And thank you so much for joining us today thank for you. sharing your story. That's you. great. Yeah, it's great. And I get one. I'd love to follow up, you know, at some other point to hear about all those, you know, 10 stories that you have in 2024 or 20 or whatever, whatever it might be since Absolutely. we can move so fast. And for more information on Top Women in Grocery podcast, please visit progressivegrocer.com backslash podcast. You can subscribe to this series wherever you typically listen to podcasts, including Apple, Google, and Spotify. And if you have an idea for a Twig podcast topic, we want to hear from you. So send me an email, lptrack at ensembleiq.com.